Hello. We're going to talk about electrolytes today. We've actually referred to electrolytes before when we did the lab um, in which we compared ionic compounds and covalent compounds. An electrolyte is a compound that will conduct electricity when it is dissolved in water. So if you dissolve something in water and it conducts electricity, that's what we're talking about. All right, the materials that dissolve in water to form a solution are called electrolytes. Materials that dissolve in water to form a solution with no ions will not conduct electricity. These are non-electrolytes. Okay. A sugar, a solution of salt, an electrolyte, conducts electrical current. A solution of sugar does not. And now we're going to look at a simulation. This simulation is from uh, the FET program, University of Colorado. And we have a conductivity meter here. So I'm going to move the conductivity meter over here into the water. And you'll notice the light is not on, but if I start to put salt into the solution, what happens, you can start to see the light is starting to light up. So put some more in, and it's getting a little brighter. Getting a little brighter. Getting a little brighter. And you notice, the more salt we add, the brighter it gets. All right, so salt, in this case, I'm assuming that it thinks it's sodium chloride, but it could be anything. Notice it continues to get brighter, okay? So that tells us two things. That tells us that concentration will affect the brightness. All right? Um, a solution of sugar does not. So now we can re look at this and remove the salt. Notice the light goes out and I'm going to change to sugar. And so I'm going to add sugar. And you can see as I'm adding the sugar, the light is not lighting up no matter how much I add. So in this case, sugar is a non-electrolyte, but salt would be an electrolyte. Ionic substances that completely dissociate are what we call strong electrolytes, except for acids, most molecular compounds, for example, sugar, molecular compounds being covalent, dissolve in water as intact molecules, and they are non-electrolytes. Acids ionize to varying degrees in water. Those that completely ionize are strong electrolytes. Those that don't are weak, or yeah. So let's talk about acids. Acids are molecular compounds. They're covalently bonded. That's what molecular compound means, as opposed to a crystal, that form ions when dissolved in water. Acids that completely ionize are called strong acids. Here's a picture. If the chlorines are the green and hydrogen is the white, all of the chlorines are completely dissociating into hydrogen and chloride. There are six strong acids. Hydrochloric acid, hydroiodic acid, hydrobromic acid, nitric acid, 
sulfuric acid, and perchloric acid. These are the six strong acids. All right, all of these will dissociate completely. So we could write HI yields H plus I. HNO3 yields H plus NO3. H2SO4 yields 2H plus SO4. HClO4 yields H plus ClO4. Acids that do not completely ionize are weak acids. Weak acids, what you get is you'll notice in the picture this guy, this acetate, this is vinegar, has lost an ion, a uh, hydrogen ion. All right, he's lost a hydrogen ion. Everybody else, this acetate, the hydrogen, there's a hydrogen ion on the oxygen. That one, there's a hydrogen ion on the oxygen. But he's lost an acetate. This guy has lost an, I'm not acetate, lost an ion, a hydrogen. So in vinegar, you're going to find both hydrogen ions, acetate ions, but you're going to also find HC, H, C2H3O2. We represent this using an arrow that goes back and forth. So for acetic acid, acetic acid will dissociate into hydrogen ions and acetate ions, but most of it, most of the time, it will be um, hydrogen acetate ions or acetic, uh, acetic acid, I, uh, not ions, molecules. Most of the time you're going to have molecules. Now when we talk about this, we may refer to species. You know that species are like a dog or a cat or an animal. Well, we talk about species here in chemistry too. And you might have a question about a strong acid. What species would you see in solution? And the answer would be hydrogen and nitrate, or hydrogen and sulfate, or hydrogen and iodide, or bromide, or what have you. For a weak acid, what species you're going to see vinegar, the acetic acid molecule, and then you'll see a few, but not a lot, of hydrogen ions and a few, but not a lot, of acetate ions. Okay? So the difference between a strong acid and a weak acid, right there. The double arrow symbol means that the reaction can go both ways, and we use that to represent weak acids. All acids other than our six that we just talked about, hydrochloric, hydroionic, iotic, hydrobromic, nitric, sulfuric, and perchloric, everything else that's an acid is weak. All right? Non-electrolytes. Okay, we've seen this picture before. Here we have a sucrose molecule, and the water particles come in and surround it. All right, the oxygen's attracted to the hydrogen on the end of the hydroxide add-ons to the sugar. So the water molecules come in and dissolve it. Here's the sugar ion or sugar molecules, and you can see the water molecules surrounding them. They're attracted to it, but they don't pull it apart. And in order for an electrolyte to conduct electricity, there have to be ions present. All right, here's picture. There's the sugar molecule, and you can see the water molecule surrounding it. Nothing that's an ion, so the light doesn't light up. There is a weak electrolyte, so we have an acetate uh, 
ion and a hydrogen ion, but most of the rest of them are molecules. They're not split up. This, we get a weak light. And then for a strong electrolyte where the sodium chlorides are all completely dissociated, the light lights up brightly. How do you know if it's a strong electrolyte? It dissociates completely. You're going to have only ion species. How do you know if it's a weak electrolyte? It dis dissociates a little bit. So you have both ions and molecules. So you're going to see the molecule and you're going to see the ions. All right, and we use that little goofy arrow. All right, another weak electrolyte is any insoluble ionic compounds. Because solubility is a relative term, everything will dissolve a tiny bit. It's also temperature dependent, so warmer things usually dissolve faster. So if you have an insoluble ionic compound, they'll be a little bit dissolving. So when you look at your solubility table, even something like phosphate that only dissolves with group 1A, a phosphate such as barium phosphate or iron phosphate, iron 3 phosphate, those are actually going to cause the light to come on a little bit because there'll be a little, a few ions, but not many. All right. How do you know if it's a non-electrolyte? It isn't an ion or an acid. All right. Um, I actually added a couple questions in. Let me find them. We talked, the last questions, what about the number of ions produced in solution? All right, well, when we did this lovely demo, we saw that the more salt we added, the brighter the light got. All right, that's a correlation, and if I show the values here. There's the molarity of the salt. The more salt I put in, the greater the molarity. So our molarity is increasing and our light is increasing. So concentration directly affects solute uh, conductivity. So concentration is important when it comes to electrolytes. So it says, how many ions will sodium chloride produce? Well, dissociate sodium chloride. Sodium chloride, when we put it in water, will dissociate into sodium ions and chloride ions. It's making two ions, okay? MgCl2, when we put it into water, it's going to make magnesium ions and chloride ions, one magnesium and two chlorines, so it's going to make three ions. Aluminum chloride is going to make two aluminum ions and three chloride ions. So that's a total of five ions. All right, the more ions you have, the stronger the electrolyte, the higher the concentration. Stronger electrolyte. All right, that's it.